A no-host Oscar this year? Just like the Oscats. The Oscats? We don't have a red carpet, and we don't make celebrities dress up and sit through a boring four-hour ceremony. Just this little podcast to see who is among the most animal-friendly in filmdom to merit an Oscat. That's next on The PETA Podcast. Welcome to The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo, your host for this behind-the-scenes look at PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. Here we talk to the key players at PETA and the movement and ask them about how animal rights change their lives and how they stay motivated to make the world a better place for the animals. On today's episode, the most animal-friendly in Hollywood get an Oscat. And 2019's In Memoriam winner exemplifies all the winners. Stanley produced characters who share this innate sense of believing in something greater than themselves, in empathy, in helping those that don't have a voice. And that is central to, to animal rights and to everything that PETA does and to everything that anyone who, who really considers uh, the quality of life for species species other than themselves so and and then of course there are also the content within his creations there are there's no shortage of examples of superheroes fighting to help animals superheroes with compassionate diets we were very sad to see stanley leave and we want to recognize his passing with our in memoriam award that's lewis crary PETA's communications project coordinator for animals in film and television, talking about just one of the awardees of the coveted Oscat, actually a big cat on a pedestal instead of that gold fellow named Oscar. Every year, PETA gives it to members of the Hollywood film community who have been exceptional in their compassion and ethical treatment of animals. We'll go over the major winners next on the PETA podcast. But first... Thanks again for joining us here at the PETA Podcast. This is episode 57 in our second season. Please share a link with friends. Let them know the animals have a voice on the PETA Podcast. And if you just found us, welcome and keep binging. There's lots to listen to on the PETA Podcast. Did you know there was vegan food being served at the Oscars Governor's Ball? Avocado tostadas with crunch cabbage and chipotle glaze and wild mushroom pot stickers, black truffle ponzu. Uh, that's just appetizers. It may be a little fancy for the rest of us, but let PETA's vegan mentors help you stay the course on your vegan journey. Episode 25. Still wondering about your Canada Goose jacket? Ditch it and stay warm and vegan. Listen to episode 44. And for more on animal testing, listen how scientists have turned it into their own welfare system on episode 11. Remember, if you're on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate and review the show. It helps the algorithm them know that PETA has a podcast on the issues important to you. There's also a link to a survey in our show notes if you're so inclined. We'd love to hear your feedback. Now, if you really want to help the animals, you can always hit the Donate Now button at PETA.org. And if you're high tech and have Amazon's Alexa, it's as easy as saying, Alexa, donate to PETA. And now to our episode. As we mentioned, the late Stan Lee is a winner of the In Memoriam Oscat. But there are some other deserving winners, many of whom were snubbed by the Oscars before the big night in the nomination process. Black Panther gets short shrift at the Oscars, not the Oscats. And Bradley Cooper, Natalie Portman, Mr. Rogers. Uh, listen who won the Oscats version of Best Picture, the Cat's Meow Award, of course. Here's my conversation with Peter's Lewis Crary. The Oscars, old news. Here's the Oscats on the PETA podcast. The Oscats are our way of recognizing films, uh, stars, crew members, folks who did right by animals in the film industry over the past year. People think of PETA as wanting to expose animal cruelty. And of course, that's a big part of what we do, but we also like to celebrate uh, when people are compassionate. And the Oscats are a way of, of showcasing the films and folks that, that did right. And so sort of like the Oscars this year, the Oscats uh, have no host. In fact, there's no show. <laughs> there's no, 
<laughs> well, then what am I doing right here? <laughs> well, this is this is kind of sort of a virtual red carpet, then I guess. But uh, I mean, for for a lack yeah, of a we'll take splashy it. thing, we're happy to have the Oscars on the PETA podcast. We're going to roll them out right now. Who was the most deserving Oscat in the Oscat Academy's uh, opinion? It's the animals who are winners, I should say, right? But and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pick among a very crowded field. I will say. One award that I'm particularly excited about is Best Director that went to Bradley Cooper, mainly because it draws attention to an issue that not a lot of people are familiar with. You see dogs and cats appear in film, and you, and you assume, oh, these are domestic animals, so there's probably no concerns there. Unfortunately, even if there was nothing discernibly problematic on the set, which we always hope is the case, no matter what happened right then when the movie was being made, that's just a snapshot of what kind of lives animals provided by suppliers to, uh, to appear in movies are living for the rest of their existence. So we really wanted to recognize Bradley Cooper because he opted to use his own companion animal, his own dog, in his movie. And that way we know where that dog went to bed that night. We know there's a loving, warm, safe household that the dog returned to. And we just have zero concerns about the welfare of that animal. So he wins just a general Oscar for use of own... Best director. Oh, best director. Ah, and, yes, and of course, yeah, best director th- for Star is Born. And this automatically makes up for the Oscar snub. Oh, I should hope so. From, from that category. I mean, because you're talking about people like Spike Lee and, and Alfonso Cuaron of Roma, who is uh, probably the favorite. Oh, the favorite's another movie in that. Category. but <laughs> but but bradley cooper was snubbed and i guess you know he should feel snubbed by the academy but but as as you said this this kind of makes up for it makes up for it i mean i think i think uh any other award show wins will be footnotes compared to uh pita oscats the the pita oscat for best director to bradley cooper okay so that that was sort of like the big splash you have 15 oscats Tell me some, some of the other Oscat winners. Um, one that we're pretty excited about is the best stunt team uh, that went to Annihilation. Um, the, the stunt team was entirely vegan for, for that mm. film. And if you saw the movie, you can see that having a plant-based diet does not compromise your ability to do any kind of, any kind of stunt work. So we're really, we're really happy about the kind of statement that makes. Annihilation. What kind of stunts do they do in Annihilation? Basically avoiding, uh, as I can recall, all manner of terrifying aliens and genetically modified monsters, which, you know, you're going to need to get away from pretty quickly. So that's why I think a vegan diet suited them pretty well. Right. So they got away from all of those and meat as well. So (laughs) exactly the scourge. Right. (laughs) <laughs> and and they so they become and the the category here was best stunt team. Okay, congratulations to them. All right, what's another category? Well, let's use Natalie Portman who who starred in in Annihilation as a segue to best actress, which she took away um both for her role uh in Annihilation. Um we've always loved Natalie. She's always been uh, she's been a long-time PETA supporter and a compassionate influence when it comes to animal rights, but also for Vox Lux, because she insisted that her wardrobe, all of her costumes for that movie, be cruelty-free. No leather, no feathers, no wool. And, and that was, you know, that's just great to see. And, and because it's Natalie Portman, we hope that could inspire um, a whole bunch of folks involved uh, in wardrobe as well as uh, actors. Now, isn't it amazing that in the best actress category, you have people like Yelitsa Aparicio from Roma. I don't even know if she's vegan. We have people like Olivia Colman in The Favorite. I She's not my favorite. We have Lady Gaga, <laughs> who wore that meat dress, but she was in A Star is Born, right? And Melissa McCarthy. I know she's lost some weight, but I don't know if she's vegan. And can you forgive me? And then, of course, Glenn Close in The Wife, who is the favorite. And I actually saw that movie, and I, I love Glenn Close. She's projected as the winner. But the PETA Oscat winner is Natalie Portman. As it should be. And you know what? I think uh, any, any number of those talented people have a shot at an Oscat next year. They just need to consider 
animal welfare when they're making their creative decisions in front of the camera uh, and behind it. All right. So on to the next category. Well, let's take a look at, uh, here's a fun one, uh, best instant karma moment. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to see Mowgli. Well, wait, wait, and a I don't minute, wanna... wait a minute here, Lewis. Best instant karma moment. I'm going through my official Oscar categories here. <laughs> I don't see best instant karma moment. I, I could it be something in Black Panther I miss? We get to make our own rules, and when we want to really recognize someone who did something great to benefit animals, then we're willing we're willing to uh, kind of make a few modifications for uh, for what kind of categories we're we're going to throw in. All right, Oscat modifications aren't like GMO type modifications. So uh, go ahead. <laughs> what is what is the best instant karma moment? Well, the messaging in a movie is something that, that's very important. Of course, we're worried about what's actually happening to animals, to real live animals on a set. But the messaging that a movie portrays, you know, that can have a pretty, a pretty significant impact on the audience. And in Mowgli, I'm not going to try and give too much away because I really want folks to see this movie, especially the beautiful, lifelike CGI animals that are in it. But they make a point of, of calling out trophy hunting for what it is, just this vile, you know, disgusting uh, a hobby amongst grotesques. But it's, it's, it's something that in, in Mowgli, the hunters get what they deserve. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll leave it at that. I, you know, I did see Mowgli. I was fascinated by the CG effects. And I think it, it is a worthy, a, a worthy winner of best karmic moment. Is it best karmic moment or best? Best, best karma. Like that was a, uh, Best part a trophy hunter getting their their comeuppance. Okay, all right, I'll I'll buy that. I'm with it. Uh, best <laughs> karma moment, Oscat for Mowgli. All right, next. If you had any problems with that, that I don't know if you're gonna if you're gonna love this, but we certainly do. And that was the best Sea World side eye. And oh wait a that's, minute, that's that's a tie. Best Sea World side eye. Okay, let's yes. see here. I I'm looking at this and I see. Black Panther didn't qualify, or did it? Oh, well, Black, Black Panther won. Black Panther won a different Oscar. Oh, okay, all right, all right. But but I mean, for this category, yes, well, sir. I can't imagine what would what would have qualified for best Sea World side eye moment. Well, as you know, Peta and any advocate for animals uh, cannot sit idly by and tolerate the the captivity of marine mammals uh, and other and other marine life. And that's starting to get reflected in, in current films. So there was not one but two major movies that came out this year that both wrote into their screenplays little digs at, at, at SeaWorld. And one of those oh, was Jurassic oh. World Fallen Kingdom, and the other was uh, Love, Simon. And, and they, both, they both included some, some pretty good shade there uh, when it comes to this uh, this. This cruelty uh, institution uh, worthy of an Oscar of a PETA Oscar. So uh, once again, those films were Love Simon and tied with Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Any side eye towards Sea World, any shade like that, uh, I I think our listeners would say worthy of an award. Oh yeah, no, you will go home with an Oscar if uh, you put in a Sea World dig. Okay, all right, because we see enough of these, uh, you know, product placement stuff. I mean, you know, uh, it's good to see filmmakers use their platform. Exactly. It's ethics placement. Right. All right, next. It wasn't just Natalie Portman who showed off cruelty-free duds. We also had best costume going to Donald Glover for his fur-free jacket in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Usually, I just see uh, Donald Glover go bare chested when he dances. Uh, <laughs> well, you know that's that's just that's just as well. That's for free as well. So Donald Glover wins an award. Okay, great. He's also not really included in any of the official categories, but but it's good to see that he merits an Oscar. Anyone who's willing to put the welfare of animals before box office dollars, they are deserving of PETA's recognition. All right, a few more. Uh, a few more. Of the big Oscar win. Best documentary uh, was a tie, but the first one I'll mention here went to Free Solo, um, and that's that's the oh. movie that that right. I don't know if you saw it, but it chronicled Alex Honnold's 
free solo climb of Yosemite National Park's famed El Capitan. Um, that's 3,000 feet without a rope, one mistake, and it's over. And he did all of this on a plant-based diet. So our, our hats and our harnesses are, are, off to, are off to Alex, and that's why we had to recognize him uh, or, and the documentary for, uh, for an Oscat. Actually, you know, Free Solo is probably the favorite in the documentary feature category, or at least a lot of people are pointing to that, even though RBG is sort of a good one. There's a, also a mm-hmm. Fathers and Sons and Mining the Gap and Hail Country this morning, this evening. But the veganism in Free Solo gives that movie the yeah. edge. Now, if only RBG was, uh, <laughs> maybe she should be vegan. I know a, a, lot of peop- a lot of people might be hoping for that. That wasn't the only documentary that the Oscats wanted to recognize. It was also a front runner um, was Won't You Be My Neighbor? And because Fred oh. Rogers was the embodiment of kindness and empathy, which is, of course, intrinsic uh, to the philosophy of PETA and that of anybody who cares um, about animals. Who, and, and there was all kinds of important subjects that were broached on that show, including healthy, humane eating. Who could forget that episode in which Picture Picture shows how tofu is made, if you remember, if you remember the show. So we, we also wanted to make sure yes. that, that that came home. Yes. And also another issue, the uh, tribute to cardiganism and the love of the cardigan. <laughs> that was another big uh, Fred Rogers thing. And once again, also an example of how the Oscats are a form of karmic justice. The Fred Rogers documentary was left off. The documentary feature, you know, list didn't make the top five. And here, the documentary honored with an Oscar. And, and, and not exactly a consolation prize either. I mean, it was a, it's a real award. Certainly. Yep. Yep. In fact, uh, they're, they're upstairs and they're being, and they're being delivered. I mean, the Oscars, you got to get dressed up. You got to rent millions of dollars of jewelry and, show up on some red carpet which may not even really be real i mean it's sort of like it's all for show you sit around for like a, a longish ceremony i mean this podcast will last maybe 25 minutes or so you got to sit for five hours and you might you might even lose that's what an oscar <laughs> is. but the oscars are actually delivered to the people right yes they are and yes we don't quite put on quite as grandiose a show. We are a nonprofit, and we choose to allocate our resources more towards helping animals than uh, than red carpets. But but they will go home with a beautiful award. Once again, uh, the superiority of the Oscars. All right, a few more awards. <laughs> the Cat's Meow. That's that's our award. Had to go to a film that you've already mentioned, uh, Black Panther. Black Panther had all kinds of things in it that made us pretty happy. Of course, at PETA and for anybody. Anybody who cares about animals, um, first and foremost, there were no real wild animals in the entire film. So the panthers that were none, depicted, none. there were none. There were no real wild animals. Those rhinos, those were those were rendered on a computer. Not a single rhino was forced onto a noisy, scary film set or surrounded by unfamiliar people. These were made on a computer, and nobody had to had to suffer. And and I think we all could appreciate the action nonetheless. So we definitely. Definitely wanted to recognize that. And not only that, but of course, and this is going to lead me into, into another award, but for our best actor, which who's Winston Duke, who was in Black Panther, the reason we're giving him that award is because he portrayed M'Baku, um, one of the, I don't know if you remember the guerrilla tribe leader, and and he makes yeah. he makes a pretty good he makes a pretty good pretty good vegetarian jest that uh that that I won't try and do justice with here, but but it was a great shout out to plant based diets again. So Black Panther both being recognized for the cat's meow, and also uh, in the capacity of best actor going to Winston Duke. So Winston Duke beats out Christian Bale and Vice, Bradley Cooper, <laughs> a favorite Star is Born, William Defoe at Attorney's Gate, Rami Malek from Bohemian Rhapsody, and Viggo Mortensen from Green Book. The best actor, at least for the Oscars. Goes to Winston Duke. By a long shot. You know, if they, and, and they got a chance, just 
just talk about your plant-based diet a little bit more in, in next year's films and you might you might be lucky enough. Now, is there something that approximates the best picture award? Cat's Meow was probably be the closest, but like I said, these are all a little bit, they're all recognizing different elements of film production where you can choose to help animals, whether it's wardrobe, whether it's messaging, whether it's the actors who are portraying the characters, the lifestyles they choose. We'll, we'll look at all of it, and we don't really see it so much as a hierarchy, so much as a way of showing audiences at home and readers of the Oscat Awards all the, all the little pieces, all the little parts in the process of a movie being made where you can do something to help animals. Another form of, or another example of the ethical justice that comes with the Oscats. Here's the Black Panther, right? It's in a category, a crowded category with Black Klansmen, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, Star is Born, Vice. And he, here it is with the, probably the biggest box office, I believe. I mean, it's the, isn't it the biggest mm. box office of all time or close to the top? It probably will be shut out. From the real Oscars and some of these other aspects of the film, which should be noted, are finally noted by Edith Oscar. So that's a funny sound there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was <laughs> Sunset, Sunset <laughs> Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a, a Raspberry Award or something. I, those are another <laughs> another set of awards, unfortunately. Let me give you one more, only because. It's close to our heart because of some of the people involved in the production. And, and that would be best animated film going to Isle of Dogs um, because oh, here is a, a film that it adds agency to animals, something we're always happy to see. Obviously, no real dogs were taken from dubious animal suppliers to, to, to perform and do tricks for this. It was all done uh, with stop animation, stop motion animation. Um, and then there were such animal-friendly actors involved, Tilda Swinton, Liv Shriver, um, and even Angelica Houston, uh, Houston uh, made the list. So we just had to make sure that we penned them into this year's Os Oscats. And another example of a film that is nominated in the animated feature film category, uh, it's competing with Incredibles 2, Murray, uh Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is probably the favorite i would say but instead of going home empty-handed it gets an oscar i love dogs <laughs> one more you you you've twisted my arm one more oscar we have an elegant transition you made for me uh with with the spider-man because we we wanted to at least recognize all of stan lee's contributions uh, to animal rights uh directly and indirectly so our in memoriam went to Stanley. Um, Stanley, uh, he has produced characters who are who share this this innate sense of believing in something greater than themselves, um, in empathy, in helping those that don't have a voice, and that is that's central to to animal rights and to everything that PETA does, and to everything that anyone who who really considers uh, the quality of life for species species other than themselves so and and then of course there are also the content within his creations there are there's no shortage of examples of superheroes fighting to help animals superheroes with compassionate diets so um, we were very sad to see stanley leave and we want to uh recognize his passing with our in memoriam award so even though the Oscats has no official ceremony, award ceremony show, it does have the PETA podcast, but even though there is no official segment where you have a, like a, maybe a singer and, you know, a blackout, and we do have our in memoriam. We, we recognize that as an official part of an award show. And we, we have our own person we'd like to remember. And that would be Stan Lee. So that's very, very touching. I, I know, Lewis, that this was not an easy thing to do, to put together a list because you had to see all these films and you had to see exactly who did what uh, for, you know, in the name of the animals. And I guess every year it gets, there's more mention or more concern. Or is, is that not what you're discovering? It's 
hardly a chore. I mean, it, it is, it is actually so great when, when so much of our work involves exposing abuse to be able to sit down and look at all these films that are showing the progress that's being made in all these different directions. Uh, it's really, it really is a kind of joyous sense of celebration, especially for us here to compile and see just how much competition. I mean, this was after whittling it down to just these ones here. So, so no, we are, we are very encouraged by, by a field that gets more and more crowded each year. And, uh, and I'm already looking forward to, uh, to the films from uh, 2019. Was last year a good year in terms of how animals were treated in general? Every year, people are learning more. You know, it's a, it's a problem of education. And so when we do things like the Oscats, it enlightens a lot of people. It shines light on issues that they otherwise wouldn't know known about. People don't know that, you know, cats and dogs, having them on their set without knowing where they're going home that night, that that can be a real issue. So so with, with each year, people are more aware. We're seeing more progress in terms of opting to use CGI or other humane alternatives like animatronics instead of using real animals. I mean, just look at, uh, we had Jumanji, you know, last year we got Mowgli this year. We're, we're going to be seeing more and more of that. I think the use of real wild animals is going to be relegated to a few holdouts. And hopefully if enough people speak out about how they're not comfortable with wild animals being forced onto film sets, we won't be seeing any more of those a few Oscats from now. And of course, uh, the people who do make uh, the changes, they will be awarded. Right. <laughs> uh, hopefully the motivation is always going to be doing right by the animals, but it can't hurt having uh, one of our shiny uh, Oscat awards also uh, hanging in the office. All right, Lewis, uh, thank you very much uh, for being part of the PETA podcast. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. PETA's Lewis Crary talking about the Oscats, PETA's awards to the most animal-friendly artists in the Hollywood film industry. Uh, we don't have a red carpet or a four-hour show. We have a low-carbon footprint. And all those nice awards will be delivered to the artists. Uh, that uh, tiger on a pedestal with stripes looking a lot sharper than that nude Oscar person, I might add. Check out all the Oscat winners on PETA.org. And that's our program. Hey, you can contact us at PETA.org. Find me on Twitter at Emil Amok, that's E-M-I-L-A-M-O-K, or on AMOK.com. Once again, thank you for listening. Check out all our episodes on Apple Podcasts, where you can rate and review the show. You know, it helps get the word out about the issues you care about. And don't forget, you can help the animals and PETA, especially if you have Amazon's Alexa. Just say, Alexa. Donate to PETA. Our music is provided by Carbon Works. Check them out on YouTube. Thanks again for listening. Join us again next time for more insight into animal rights and the fight for a cruelty-free world on the PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo.